So there's an LLP which needs funds to develop a new robotic arm. Uh, and they approached an individual who likes to encourage certain startups and he decides to forward a loan amount of 50 lakhs. Usually it would be a bank, but right now for the sake of simplicity, we had said this will be an individual. And the parties enter into a loan agreement and you had to specify, you had to draft certain clauses. Uh, eight clauses had to be drafted. Now let's look at the clauses to be drafted. A clause specifying the loan amount, interest rate, and if it was fixed or variable, you had to identify what is the index based on which it was variable. And then a clause specifying the purpose of the loan and consequences if the loan is diverted for another purpose. A prepayment clause with two variations. One, a very prepayment is prohibited. Now you can't prevent somebody from repaying your loan, but where prepayment does not offer any advantage to the borrower. So the entire amount of interest would be payable even if the loan is prepaid. And the second one was that if the loan is prepaid, then the amount of interest uh, uh, owed till that date plus half of the amount of interest that would be payable if the loan had been held till the maturity date. So half of that would be payable. So this imposes an additional cost on the borrower. And it also gives some kind of cushion to the lender that even if he gets the loan, repaid early he still has he doesn't have to recover all the money as interest again he has some time frame to find a new borrower the reason a lender prohibits prepayment clauses are can anybody tell me why a lender prohibits prepayment he stops getting interest exactly and the lender will have to find a new borrower then so he wants to be compensated for the same exactly shivam good shivam and deep Okay. Now, which circumstances will be considered an event of default and what will be the consequence of default? So we'll go through your drafts for this. Then what happens if a date of repayment of principal or interest is missed? Now, uh, two things I wanted to point out about these clauses is that uh, event of default, you, you've all gone through the agreement and identified specific instances which constitute an event of default. Consequence of event of default is acceleration, which is the full amount of interest due and the whole outstanding principal due and any future ability to draw the loan is cancelled. But uh, what you all have missed out is that uh, something called a default interest. So if I delay in repayment of the loan, obviously it can be called off as an event of default, but even a bank will not want to immediately do so. So what it will instead do is it will charge an additional rate of interest, maybe uh, another 1% per month for the delay. So that's called a default rate of interest. So your current interest rate plus the default rate of interest will what will be will be payable if you delay in payment. So uh, the submissions I've received, I've seen that that rate is missed out. And in, some, in one case, there is a very high interest which has a very high monetary consequence, which has been imposed. So that becomes, uh, that can be, un there's a risk that it might not be enforced by a court. So keep that in mind. We'll come to the draft. Then what are the undertakings a borrower needs to make? Then what are the representations and warranties? And we've given you four warranties, which you have to just add there, okay? And you can add other warranties too. And then a clause which says what happens in cases of disputes and there would be some kind of a, 30 day period to rectify any such problems. Now let's look at what we've got in the submissions. So here cautions prepayment clauses borrower acknowledges and agrees that prepayment of the facility shall not be permitted. In exceptional circumstances, the lender may consider prepayment subject to following conditions. At the time of prepayment, the borrower shall pay the prepayment charges equivalent to interest amount, which would have accrued if the facility would have continued for the entire tenure, the lender reserves its rights to waive or modify the prepayment charges in its sole discretion. Now this part becomes unreasonable, okay, where you say that the lender will modify the prepayment charges because then having a whole agreement to determine determination of the terms right now becomes unfruitful if you are going to modify the interests or the prepayment rates or charges. So ideally, I would suggest you have this one straight away. Pre 
that the time of prepayment and borrower shall prepay the charges equivalent to the interest amount accrued that's it so this is one version okay second version is in addition to the principal outstanding and interest due in the facility at the time of prepayment the borrower shall pay prepayment charges equivalent to half of the total amount compounded interest calculated for the remaining tenure of the facility okay so this is option 1 and this is option 2 i'll show you another clause i had just looked at someone else's okay one second koshals we have seen i'll just share nikhil's so this is what we are looking at right i want you to go through this that will help no this is not the one i have corrected uh, anyway just just one minute let me find out the one that i was correcting okay manish is here this is option 1 the borrower shall not prepay the whole loan amount or any part of the loan amount in case of prepayment of any amount the borrower shall have to pay the interest amount which have been already computed in accordance with the terms and conditions of this agreement anyway which would be due over the entire tenure of the loan option 2 if the borrower decides to prepay the loan amount it shall have to pay at least half of the interest of the amount which have which would have been actually paid had the borrower paid in accordance with the repayment schedule in addition to the principal amount and interest already due on the prepayment date so prepayment clause is clear to you all so loan amount and interest rate most of you have done correctly let's look at the purpose and then prepayment we've just discussed now let's look at the purpose part so here i have put in the prepayment in case of a, the prepayment part has been corrected in your vishal okay let me look at the purpose okay now here you've written if the loan gets diverted for some other purpose then the interest rate will hike from 10% to 24% which is good creative but the problem is that there are two legal problems one is that penalty clauses under indian law are illegal unless uh, there is a loss that can be explained that the party suffered that loss so 10% to 24% is a huge hike okay you don't want that sometimes there is a regulation on the interest rate that is charged also so that can be breached third is if this is a foreign loan thankfully this is not but when there is a foreign loan an rbi prescribes a ceiling on the amount of interest that can be payable to a foreign lender now if you put these kind of things then it will get hit right so what you only need to look at one of the simplest ways to do this is by saying that there will be an acceleration that the loan will get accelerated and all and it will be considered as an event of default changing the purpose of the application of loan proceeds will become an event of default and that will lead to acceleration means entire principal and entire interest amount will be due i hope that's clear right now again let's look at just one second let me take a quick attendance yeah now let's look at the other clauses please stop me in case you have any questions okay just hang on yeah so we discussed prepayment we discussed purpose what is considered an event of default 
what happens if a date of principal or interest is missed and what would these these two let's look at now okay so i'm going to look at vishal's draft again if the borrower fails in the startup and becomes incapable to pay the principal and interest it will be considered to be an event of default okay so i suggest that you know you are giving a 30 day period right that 30 day period to rectify is there so i suggest you say that there will be a default pay, uh, interest which will be charged let's say at 1% for the period for which it is due 1% per month for the period for which it is pending if there is and that 30 day period can also start a 30 day notice to rectify is paid is given if that is not rectified then this then it will be considered an event of default you are getting so you need to separate that that it doesn't immediately trigger acceleration so your event of default will define a default where for 30 days it has continued default interest has not been paid okay now that becomes your event of default so these are two different ways to word it in okay and if you worded it in such a way that event of default is actually a default is a failure to pay on a due date after that the whole loan gets accelerated and 1% interest is also due then it becomes a little ambiguous but then it is up to the bank if the bank does not enforce the event of default and the party pays the 1% interest then you know that you know the the bank wants the prepayment the default interest rate and it has not called an event of default you can leave it at that also that depends the both ways of drafting are fine if the borrower missed to pay the principal amount you are saying in case of breach the borrower will be liable to pay 7% interest on the principal amount for that respective year how is this 7% calculated not clear okay uh, so if there's a breach the first thing is acceleration or it's always acceleration also uh, be careful when you write some of you have written terms like material breach of the contract so when you say material breach it needs to be very clear as to what you mean by a material breach so typically in this what they will identify is event of default and it will be listed as 5 6 criteria and one of these will be slightly vague which one is that that criterion is called a material adverse effect material adverse effect is with respect to the condition finances stability of the borrower sometimes the lender can also say if that is the general economic condition of the market which will cause a material adverse effect in the ability of the borrower to repay the money then that also becomes a material adverse effect that material adverse effect can amount to an event of default thus triggering acceleration okay uh, your your undertakings are very creative the first one though is mutually inconsistent and i could not understand what it meant it says borrower agrees to notify the borrower in case of any default regarding prepay regarding payment of loan i'm not sure what this means so in case of any default you can say there should be an advance information given but still the default interest will get triggered uh obtaining noc in case of any major asset sale or slum sale okay in case of a change of control again there can be a undertaking that consent will be obtained um so that's the second undertaking and there can be undertaking that there will be no material change in the way the business is conducted there can be undertaking that uh, the the loan will only be used for the purpose that has been granted it has been granted and for no other purpose there can be an undertaking that the borrower will not give further on lending of money will not be allowed all of these can be possible undertakings then borrower will not take subsequent create subsequent indebtedness the borrower will not give uh, take take loans on by offering its assets as security all these are examples of undertakings that the borrower can give then representation and warranty these are well done you have taken these from the question and put them appropriately that the borrower is compliant with the applicable laws performance of obligations is not violative of a contract or existing law that's correct and that there is no other debt or encumbrance created with any third party ideally you should say 
as as on the date of execution because as of when you are making a representation is very important if your representation turns out to be a false then again there will be a trigger of uh, acceleration because it will be an event of default have you written all the others let me see if there's any other missing clause okay good so in you haven't mentioned the event of default part in a lot of detail so you've written this would be an event of default and the second situation basically failure failure to pay is an event of default but there are going to be many more events of default okay let's look at the situation here and find out what can be the possible events of default let's look at the single loan agreement in the learning management system so you can do a search here event of default kashish if there is a default then the best way is any default should first trigger a penal interest and the bank should have the option to call it an event of default okay now whether the bank enforces that right or not penal interest will automatically start ticking in that is what has to be there let's see how event of default look clause 9.2 okay events of default after occurrence of event of default lender shall be entitled by notice in writing to declare that the indebtedness has become immediately due and payable now this a lender may not want to do that if there's penal interest payable and it is also paid a lender will not send this notice okay an event of default occurs if borrower suffers a change in control without prior written consent of the lender basically if parent shareholding of the borrower is changed then it says here what is an indicator of it more than 51% of voting power of borrower goes to somebody else if the borrower issues a lot so redeems its shares and capital makes changes to its moa or articles without prior notification or written approval of the lender any event which would uh, constitute an event of default this is a vague one a petition is presented or resolution is passed for winding up borrower fails to perform its undertakings or obligations under this agreement or a security document if there is a secured if this loan is secured then there will be other security documents executed and if the borrower fails to perform those obligations then it will become a default the borrower fails to make any payment due under this agreement or the due date see so this becomes event of default fails to make any payment due under this agreement material adverse change occurs in the opinion of the lender so this is in the opinion of the lender subjective criterion in the assets financial condition results of operations prospects or business or affairs of the borrower some objective criteria but ultimately the subjective opinion of the lender which can be connected to any of these criteria then there can be an event of default trigger all loans have this kind of risk for borrowers but at the same time borrowers know that this risk cannot be unreasonable because a lender is ultimately interested in getting interest any representation or warranty made by the borrower pursuant to this agreement made which turns out to be incorrect hence it's very important to specify the time as of which the representation or warranty is made if in the reasonable opinion of the lender business or operations are not being responsibly or efficiently conducted or information concerning the business or affairs is unsatisfactory if any encumbrance basically any party in favor of whom an encumbrance is created takes possession of or a receiver is appointed for the property and assets of the borrower if the borrower is unable to pay its debts if a proposal for voluntary arrangement is made by the borrower if documents are filed for appointment of an administrator so basically things where a receiver or an administrator is appointed if any other indebtedness of the borrower is not paid when due this is a cross default clause it says that if some other, under some other agreement indebtedness of the borrower is not paid when it has fallen due 
then this will amount to an event of default. Okay, so I'm going to acceleration is not a term which has been written here in detail, but it says that all the indebtedness due will be payable, which actually is what acceleration is all about. 